This is the Cabrillo Marine Aquarium in San Pedro, near the southern tip of LA. Built in 1981, the main exhibit hall was designed by architect Frank Gehry, the same Frank Gehry behind some of the biggest and boldest buildings from the last few decades. His most well-known work stretches metal and glass structures into complex, curving shapes meant to represent the movement in urban areas, which is all made possible with aerospace-grade design software and advanced construction techniques. In LA, his Walt Disney Concert Hall and Grand Avenue Towers are a couple of familiar examples of his massive body of work. But earlier in his career, which took off in Southern California in the late 70s through the 80s, Gary's buildings looked quite a bit different. A 1978 upgrade of his own home in Santa Monica used jagged structures of corrugated metal, glass, wood, and chain-link fence. This building marked the genesis of Frank Gary's signature deconstructivist style, which he would bring to the design of the Cabrillo Marine Aquarium a few years later. Like his house, the aquarium employs traditional building materials like plywood, stucco, and chain-link fence. The overall design of the building is supposed to resemble an industrial fishing village, inspired by the canneries and warehouses in the nearby port of LA. Through the entrance, an outdoor courtyard is framed by large structures of fence, which is lightly rusted and provides a framework for the hanging signs, flags, and models of whales, rays, and sharks. These materials that fascinated Gary in his early career are also on clear view on the inside of the aquarium. The chain link fence frames fish tanks and exhibits, giving the space a distinct industrial aesthetic. Electrical conduit and plumbing for the tanks are exposed, which displays the building's mechanical functions instead of hiding them. As for the actual exhibits, the Cabrillo Marine Aquarium focuses on ocean life in Southern California and claims to have the largest collection from the region. Also, the aquarium is run by the LA Parks Department, is funded by the Port of LA, and is open to the public with free admission, though donations are encouraged. The aquarium is small, but packs a lot into the space it has. Whereas other aquariums create an immersive experience with large floor-to-ceiling tanks and dramatic lighting, the Cabrillo Marine Aquarium uses a different, more space-conscious approach. A series of zigzagging walls creates two separate realms within the main exhibit hall. On one side, tanks have labels and information explaining their content. But on the other side, tanks face an internal tunnel that is blacked out with minimal lighting. This makes the viewing experience much different and more immersive than the other side, and is only possible since the plumbing is above and beside the tanks, rather than behind them. The aquarium also features a building from a 2004 renovation designed by Barton Phelps. On the main facade, which faces the road and parking lot, a series of fiberglass tubes direct visitors' eyes to the main entrance to the original Frank Gehry building. It complements the original architecture very well. Since the building has two floors, it adds some density to the space-constrained complex, with a library and some offices above exhibit space. On the inside, the first floor is broken up into the Exploration Center and the Aquatic Nursery. The Exploration Center is more of a kid-focused experience, with lots of opportunities for interactive learning. There's a crawl-through aquarium tank and various other hands-on exhibits. On the other side, the aquatic nursery is an active laboratory where live algae cultures are grown to feed the animals in the collection, and endangered species are raised under close supervision. Like some of the exhibits in the main aquarium building, plumbing and conduit are exposed, which adds context to the bubbling plastic tubes and glass jars where live cultures grow. Back to the main exhibit hall, much of the signage and displays look somewhat old. Several displays hanging on the wall and in the wooden table display cases appears to be original, from when the aquarium opened in the 80s. They have this unique handmade look to them that I just haven't seen elsewhere. It's so rare to see a building like an aquarium go 40 years without a renovation that completely changes the look of the interior. And although the exhibits and displays might look a bit old, they still look good. The standard lettering used on the tanks forms a cohesive visual identity, and everything is well maintained. I actually think the older displays have held up so well because they now look retro and vintage, and never really tried to catch up with the changing times. A few exhibits that reference the changing environment and marine habitat destruction refer to the future as anything past the early 2000s. 
This makes parts of the aquarium truly feel like a time capsule. Still, there are several displays that were added later, like the tide pool tank that replaced a group of tanks that were framed by a chain link fence structure. It looks really good and modern, and the projected tide pool effect works really well. In other areas, touchscreens have been added to supplement the existing exhibits. Besides the Barton Phelps edition and some new displays, the aquarium has seen several other changes over the years. In 2018, John Van Hammersveld, the graphic designer behind the Endless Summer poster and several famous album covers, created a colorful mural that wraps around the gift shop. It adds some contrast to the plain stucco walls of the low slung outer buildings. Recent work on the aquarium, particularly during the year-long closure for the COVID-19 pandemic, has seen a few exhibits get updated at the direction of the aquarium's new exhibits director. Sections of chain link fence that previously had blank tarps attached to them now have drawings of marine life that help tie together the aquarium's new visual theme. This new signage is all fresh and modern. As for the future, there have been a couple expansions planned throughout the years that haven't quite materialized yet. The first is an unbuilt Phase 2 from the 2004 Barton Phelps expansion, which would have constructed a new building for the gift shop, a project lab, and a garage for some outreach vans around the front of the property. There was another future expansion planned around 2015. The price tag was $25 million and called for a new pavilion and upgrades to the exhibition hall. I can't determine if this expansion is still on the table, but it's possible it has been cancelled due to the high cost. Although the Cabrillo Marine Aquarium's postmodern architecture frames the exhibit so well, it's not what truly makes the aquarium great. It's the people who lovingly maintain the facilities and look after the creatures living there. Whether the aquarium decides to preserve what's there now, or moves forward with large expansions and renovations in the future, I am confident the aquarium will continue to educate and inspire the community. This place is seriously a hidden gem, and I hope it will remain open for generations to come. It's amazing to see such an early example of Frank Gehry's iconic architecture preserved so well, but it's the marine life and the staff that will keep people coming back to visit. <laughs>